Electric scooters have been around long enough that even if you've never ridden one, I have a feeling you've probably at least seen people riding them. And the vast majority of those are going to be stand-up scooters. A sit-down scooter is a completely different beast. It rides different, it feels different, it just is different. I'm Chris Wook and you're watching reviews from makeuseof.com and today we're looking at the High Boy Ecom 14. A sit-down scooter that has a couple tricks up its sleeve that let it operate as a stand-up scooter if you really want it to. Is this the right scooter for you? I don't know. Let's find out. Now the first part of this review isn't actually part of the review. It's just a reminder to you that if you get any electric scooter, e-bike, or anything like that, to check the box very carefully when it first arrived. I say that because this scooter arrived with a completely broken display and somehow a bent air valve in one of the wheels. That may not be the case for you. I've seen plenty of other cases where people got their Ecom 14s and they arrived in perfect shape, but still just make sure you check that box before you start setting it up and have it all ready to go. As I was talking about, while the Ecom 14 is primarily a sit-on scooter, you can completely remove the seat if you want to stand on it. I wouldn't recommend it because it takes part of the fun of the scooter away, but if you get yours, you're riding it around, and you realize you really want to stand, it's nice to know that this can go between sitting and standing. That said, taking the seat off is a little more involved because you can't just pull it out of the post. You actually have to remove the entire assembly from the deck, and that's going to take a little work. Still, it's nice to know it can be done. Now it's not just the seat that makes this scooter different. It also has a wider platform to give it a little more stability when you're sitting, plus larger 14 inch wheels. A lot of scooters have wheels around eight and a half or maybe 10 inches. So these being a little bigger is gonna give you a lot more stability when you're seated on the road if you happen to hit a bump. In a world where scooters seem to be getting less and less adjustable, it's nice to know that the Ecom 14 is actually quite adjustable. You can actually adjust the height of the handlebars on the front column, which is really handy because you can also adjust the seat. If you could only adjust the seat height and had bars at a fixed level, that could lead to being pretty uncomfortable. It can take a couple combinations to find out the right seat and handlebar combo for you, but it shouldn't take too long for you to figure out. Another interesting feature that comes with the Ecom 14 is the basket on the back. Now you don't have to attach this, but you might as well because it's fully collapsible. So when you don't want to use it, you can just fold it down. That said, be careful when you open it up because this springs open with quite a bit of force. And if you're not careful, I could see that smashing some fingers in a way that you would not like very much. Death trap nature aside, the basket is really handy to have, especially if you plan on using this for commuting or running errands. Looking at the range and portability, the High Boy Ecom 14 features a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery that gives it a range of up to 31 miles and a max speed of up to 22 miles an hour. That's on the highest of the three speed modes, but we'll look at those a little later on. The scooter also has a pretty high 220 pound weight limit. And keep in mind that includes not just you, but you and your cargo. Even so, that means that plenty of people can fit themselves on the bike as well as say 20 pounds of cargo or even 50 pounds of cargo if it'll actually fit in that basket, which I don't think it will, but let's pretend that's not an issue at the moment. Still, it's pretty nice to have that high capacity. It's also nice to know that if you are over that weight limit, that won't affect the top speed or the acceleration of the scooter, at least too much. The main thing it's going to do is lower the maximum range you get. So just keep that in mind if you're pushing it above the weight limit. Most scooters fold down so you can more easily move them around, put them in a closet, stow them in your trunk to take them somewhere. And this does too, but that seat really gets in the way, so you can't fold it down all that much. If you've got a car with a smaller trunk, you might have some trouble fitting this in there. You can remove the seat from the post and get a little extra room, but even then, the handlebars never lock to anything, so moving this around when it is collapsed isn't as easy as other scooters. It's also on the heavy side, so moving this up and down stairs if you're in an apartment building isn't gonna be fun. If you can, do whatever you can to keep it on the ground floor just to limit the amount of time you have to spend moving it. Looking at safety features, you get brakes, which is nice to know. 
because if you didn't, that would be trouble. Unlike a lot of scooters, you actually get front and rear brakes. It's a disc brake in the rear and a drum brake in the front. Now that isn't quite as effective as a disc brake actually by a long shot, but it does mean that it's easier to get the front wheel on when it first comes in the box because this comes with the front wheel removed. You might find the brakes don't actually stop so well when you first take the scooter out of the box. Don't worry about that. Just know that you need to adjust them. There's plenty of adjustments on the handlebars on each brake lever so you can adjust how much stopping power you have. Make sure to do that before you take this for your first ride. You also get a headlight for night riding, although it's located in a really weird spot. Most scooters put the headlight right up near the handlebars or slightly below it. This puts this down on the ground just above the front wheel. That does illuminate exactly where you're going, but that part of the front column doesn't actually turn when you turn the handlebars. So you can end up where you're starting to turn this way and the headlight is just shining straight forward in front of you, which isn't always the best solution. You also get a brake light that works regardless of whether the headlight is turned on or not. Just pulling either brake will make the brake light flash behind you, letting anybody behind you know, hey, you're stopping. Moving on to actually getting this to move around and have some fun on it, the controls are pretty much what you'd expect for a scooter, meaning that both the throttle and the display are on the right side of the handlebars. As I already mentioned, the display on my model was effectively broken. I could see the backlight and I could see a couple things in there, but it always looked like the battery was half full, even when it was completely full or closer to empty. So I didn't really get to test that out too much and I don't have too much footage to show you of it. That said, even though I couldn't see the display, using it to switch between the speed modes was straightforward. I just looked up how to do it in the manual and then had to kind of remember it as I was moving around. It is nice to know that if you're on the road and a rock comes out of nowhere and takes out your display, that you can still keep going and change speed modes. You could even technically change the display between kilometers and miles per hour if you want, though that wouldn't really matter because you wouldn't be able to see it. Speaking of those speed modes, as I said before, you get three. The lowest one is limited to a max speed of nine miles an hour. And it feels like the acceleration's a little bit lower there too. That makes it nice for maneuvering this in tight spaces. If you want a little assistance moving around your garage or your apartment even, it can be handy to turn it on for that. But it's also handy if you're moving on a city pathway and you don't wanna go out of control and knock over a bunch of pedestrians. The next two speed limits are a little closer together in a strange way, with the second speed mode putting you at a max of 16 miles an hour, and the third and final speed mode setting the max to 22 miles an hour. There's not a huge difference here, so I always just kept it in the maximum mode. One thing is that even though I couldn't tell how fast I was going via the display, I could tell when the limiter kicked in, especially going downhill, because I'd be going downhill, pick up a bit of speed, let off the throttle, I'd go to hit it again, and it would not do anything until you come back down under that minimum speed. This also doesn't seem to have regenerative braking. You just kind of coast downhill, so keep that in mind as well. Aside from that lower mode I mentioned earlier, acceleration on this feels pretty good. It picks up speed pretty quickly, at least when you're under that maximum weight limit. If you're over that, I'm not really sure what the acceleration's like. It might be a little bit lower, but I imagine it's still zippy. And that includes going up hills. I never felt any loss of power taking this up hills, at least around where I was testing it out. Steeper hills could be a problem. I mentioned it at the top of the review, but the feel of riding a sit-down scooter is very, very different. It's almost more like riding a bike, though you're a little lower to the ground and you have teeny tiny wheels that are terrifying every time you hit anything larger than a grain of sand. At least that would be the case with most scooters. Though this has no suspension, it actually soaks up road chatter surprisingly well. I was on some pretty rough roads when I was testing it out and didn't come away nearly as beat up feeling as I thought I would. Surprisingly enough, it even does okay off-road. And I mean, it is a scooter. It's got low clearance and fenders that you could break if you're not careful. You don't want to take this on mountain bike trails. That said, if you want to ride around your backyard or take it on some city paths or bike paths, this will do a better job than even some of the heavier duty stand-up scooters I've tried. Despite, or maybe even because of its relatively low price tag, the Highboy Ecom 14 is simple, easy to use, 
and a whole lot of fun. I was surprised at how good the ride quality was considering there's no suspension, and even how easily it handled minor off-roading. Obviously not everything's perfect, but there is a lot to like here for anybody looking to use it for commuting, getting to school, getting to work, doing errands. It's got a lot of different uses. There are those issues I mentioned before, namely that it's heavy and bulky, and it's not the easiest to move into your trunk if you want to take it on a trip, for example. That said, if you drive a truck or an SUV or just a vehicle with a larger trunk that you can fit this into, that's not going to be a problem. Basically, if you look at the scooter and think, hey, that looks like something I'd really like, it's probably true and you'll probably really enjoy it. And that about wraps it up for this one. For specs and other more detailed info, go check out the written review over at makeuseof.com. You'll find a link down in the description. Thank you to Highboy for sending the review unit. And as always, thank you for watching.